The other day I was on Maker World looking at some of these cool snap boxes and I stumbled across something that I didn't expect. And that is the ability to load in parametric fusion files that allow anyone to modify the parameters that we set. Now I had a look through and almost nobody's using the features. So I thought it'd be a good time to try it out on some real projects to see how it works and if it's something that might be useful for you and for me as well. So let's go to try and really see how good this thing is. So stick around. Some designs are one size fits all, but others are supposed to be flexible. And there are two ways to allow that flex to work in Fusion. One is to provide the original Fusion file, and not everyone is happy to release their original file. And I can completely understand that because sometimes they take a lot of time to create and then we're just giving it away. Most people are really good about it, but personally there have been a few people out there that will try to take advantage. So if you're good with that, I say go for it. But even though we're providing the file, there is still the problem of not everyone having or knowing how to use Fusion. So it doesn't really work for everyone. The other option is to try and adjust the model ourselves and try and provide every size possible. And that does work too, but it creates a ton of extra work for the designer. It also causes a really bloated upload and I'm just not a huge fan of that. I like things to be very clean and simple. So that's kind of why I was interested in this feature that Maker World is offering and why I wanted to give it a try to see how well it actually works and what we need to do in Fusion to actually have it turn out for us. So let's start with something super basic. I've created this block and I've set it up to be parametric. And if we change any of these values, the block sizes change automatically. So now what we need to do is make sure our parameter naming is nice and clean. That's so that everyone can understand it. Now, normally I like to shorten names, but in this case, I will not do that. I'm gonna keep them full length. And I'm also gonna add a description. So we have length, width, thickness. They're all self-explanatory, but with more parameters, it'll become less clear. And the description is really going to help with that. One thing to note is that it's also important to keep the part orientation in mind. Length and width can be confused sometimes depending on the part. So length and depth might work a little bit better. We want our length to be along the X direction and our depth to be along the Y. And you'll see how that works in just a minute. The file naming is also important here because it's going to be visible. Normally with a 3MF file or an STL file, we'd only see the part name, but here we're actually gonna see the file name instead. In other words, if your file comes in called untitled, you know you've done something wrong. So this is the finished block. I fancied it up just a little bit and it will come in at this size by default. I've also added a hollow in the center so that we can see just how flexible this is. So we export our file, we get the .f3d file. We'll go to Maker World and upload that model just like we would normally do. But I will set the model as private. And we're also gonna set it in this case so that it's not open. So people don't have access to the actual Fusion file itself. Now I'm setting this as a private model because this model is absolutely awful. We will do a real model which is customizable later on and also downloadable. So if we open up the test block in Maker World, just like you would normally do, over to the right hand side, you'll see a green button that's called Customize and you can click on that and it will open up this new window. So we can play around with these numbers and it takes about 30 seconds or so to update the model. That is a little bit of a small price to pay for the flexibility that we're getting here. So now we can work on a model that I've wanted to do for a long time and that is an adjustable size of rod sloth. So what I've done is made the overall size kind of flexible and that way the rod sloth will adjust automatically based off of the diameter of the threads or of the rod that we're trying to match. And there are a lot of different sizes of threads and combinations. So this may not work 100% for every single thing, but I'm try and make it work for at least the majority of them. I chose this model because it's complex enough to get a sense of how well this is really gonna work. And also because it is probably one of the handiest tools that I've ever created, even though it is so simple. So here's how I set it up. Everything is connected to the parameters and you have a lot of control over the final result. We have the rod outside diameter, which is pretty straightforward. You just put your calipers on the rod and that's the dimension you need to plug in. We have the thread pitch. And in this case, it's going to be the distance it takes for one thread to go the full 360 degrees around or one full revolution. We have the amount of thread starts. So it's how many threads are actually cut into the rod. One is a typical threaded rod or a bolt, for example. Two can be used on a 3D printer. Four can also be used on a 3D printer or a CNC machine. We also have the finger thickness. So how thin or thick would you like those fingers to be? It should be a little bit smaller than the gap between the threads. And we also have the finger depth. 
Now it doesn't need to go right into the root because we're also going to be using an old towel, but you can choose to do whatever you like. For example, if you wanted to make this from TPU, it could act maybe more like a squeegee, so no towel would be needed in that case. And next we have magnet height and the diameter as well, because even the ability to change the magnet size is pretty nice on a model because you might already have one that you'd want to use rather than having to go ahead and buy one. Most threads are right-handed, so this model will be that way, but to get a left-handed version, the final model can just be mirrored in the slicer. So let's check how this works. We are going to start with the typical 3D printer threaded rod, a four start eight millimeter right-handed threaded rod with a trapezoidal tooth. So that's gonna come in as the default, but we can change it to a two start thread, which is then 10 millimeters in diameter. And that's what you'd see on the Z screw for the GD plus four and for the GD Q2, for example. But basically you have the control that you need to make whatever size it is that suits your needs. If the size is based off of a realistic thread size, it should do the job pretty well. As far as I know, there's no way to actually add any limits on the low or the high side of these inputs. So it could go a little bit wild, but I think that will probably be the more rare occurrence. So before we bring it into Maker World, we need to do one more thing, and that is to make sure to favorite the parameters that we want anyone to see and to modify. And I'm also gonna do them in order too, so that they appear in Maker World in that order. It's gonna make the most sense when we're filling it in. And all this is in millimeters. Most 3D printer rods are metric as well. So for some reason, my fusion file was a little bit messed up because the thread outer diameter, which was one of the first ones I created and I'm no longer using, it cannot be deleted and the references don't exist, but it doesn't know. And it's kind of messing up what I've got set up here. So unfortunately, they are gonna be a little bit out of order. So you can see here's the rod slot. The little icon in the corner tells you it's customizable. And we click on that and we can customize it. So over here is where it's supposed to be in order and it's not working for me, but it should work for anyone who tries it and does not have a corrupt parameter like I did. So this one doesn't do anything. I'm gonna change it to 10 millimeters. This is going to suit the Chidi Plus 4 or the Chidi Q2 as well. And I have the ability to change the magnet sizes as well. So the finger depth, 1.6. I have thread angle, we can change that if we like to. I don't need to here. The thread start is going to be two. And finger thickness, 0.8 maybe. Thread pitch is four millimeters. And that is that. Now I did have a section in here originally for text. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to allow text to be modified through this method. This is the area that I wanted to be able to adjust the text in here. And if you want to do that, you can do that right in the slicer instead. So I'll press generate. So now we have a two start 10 millimeter thread right-handed for the Chidi 3D printers for cleaning those lead screws. If this is not on the correct plane, it will not come in oriented correctly and it will take a little bit of uh, fixing on the user's side in the slicer to orient it properly. But it's better to do it if you can from the very beginning so it makes it easy for anybody. You can see how it's flat there on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, 3D print three of these and add some color as well into them. And then we'll go ahead and test them out and see how they work out. So I have these three, these are for my Chidi printers. I will replace my old ones because they don't match. And these also have the updated logo on there. The fingers are a little bit thinner, so they should reach down a little bit better into the root of the thread. Also considering that I like to use these with a little bit of old towel, that should help to get down deeper into there. So these turned out great. And I also have these three. These are printed in three colors, blue, black, and also of course the orange and they turned out really nice. So these are for my bamboo printers. They also fit some Creality printers and they will also fit your typical Prusa printers as well. So it's great to have both sets and I can tell them apart really easily. I also printed this one here. This is actually for my lathe and I just need one of them and I don't need to clean it very often, but this one turned out great too. You can see it's just flexible enough here that I can put a bit of pressure on there. So this is just a one start thread. And these are two start threads. These are four start threads. 
And I also printed one more. This one was just to see how big I could go without it looking too ridiculous. And this is pretty hilarious looking, but it turned out 30 millimeter diameter. Pretty cool. So if you're using Fusion and you don't want to release your file to everyone, this seems like a really good alternative. So I actually went back to an old model, which I never bothered to upload, and I made it parametric. And it is a towel hook for a glass shower door. And originally I made it just one size, but now I've got the length that's flexible and also the glass door thickness too. And this model is uploaded for anyone to change the size as they see fit. And I even designed it as a spring so that it doesn't move around on the glass door. Just make sure to print something like this with at least five walls and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, especially if you have kids because they will probably try and climb up that towel. Thanks to my patrons for helping to support this channel. And if you're not already subscribed, I'd appreciate a sub or just a like if that suits you better. As always, if you're looking for a printer, I have a short list of my top recommended 3D printers as well. And any purchase through those links helps to support this channel to keep me making videos like this. Take care and I hope to see you on the next one.